Hello, hello, hello. Hey, everyone. Hello. How are we? All right? All right, we're going to get started. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Emmanuel. I'm a financial advisor, and I run a company called The E-Man Effect. I don't know if anyone's seen it. It's on Instagram. Mainly, our main platform is Instagram, also on Twitter, but mainly on Instagram. And today, I've basically got a seminar, which is 10 Steps to Financial Freedom. Obviously, you've only got an hour, so I'm now doing five steps. So you're going to get the first half of the presentation, and we're going to go through. But let me introduce myself, explain who I am, where I've come from, and so forth. So basically, I'm a financial advisor. I have been since age 22. So my background, I'm from London, East London. Anyone heard of Tower Hamlets? Yes. yes. Okay, cool. Um, yes, I'm from East London, Tower Hamlets, um, and I lived in a place called Limehouse. Okay. And so Limehouse, there's two sides to Limehouse. There's the really nice part and there's the really poor part. I lived on the really poor part. Um, and um, I went to school in Bow. Anyone heard of Bow? Yeah, yeah if, you, if you listen to Grime or whatever, yeah, that's, I was there when they, when they were all creating where I lived down the road. Went to school with a lot, a lot of Grime MCs and so forth and grew up around that, that environment. So basically, um, from my window, I, I used to see a place called Canary Wolf. Anyone heard of Canary Wolf? So I used to see a place called Canary Wolf, and I used to look out my window and I'd say, one day, I'm going to be in that building. People say, why did you choose that? Basically, my parents are African-Nigerian, yeah? And so my mum, if you left the kitchen and you left the light on, it was a big thing. It was like, who left the light on? You're wasting money, da 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 At night, I would look out my window, and I would look at all these buildings with the lights on, and I said, no, <laughs> there must be money there, because nobody's in there and the lights are on. This is serious. So I said, no, nah, that's where I want to be. So I wanted to be in Canary Wolf. So I'm like 13, 14. Don't know how I'm going to get there, but I'm like, I'm going to be there. So basically, I got a job in Canary Wolf working in Marks and Spencers while I did my degree in accounting and finance. Partway through, I used my experience from Marks and Spencers to get a job as, at Barclays as a cashier. So I was a cashier while I did my degree. When I finished my degree, I was so good at being a cashier that they said, whatever job you want, you can get. Basically, I used to, I worked three days a week but I used to outperform everyone that was full-time. I used to get, they used to give me the keys to the branch. You know, you're supposed to give part-time people the keys to the branch, but I used to get to work early. So basically, when I was young, I used to work to my own clock. So I used to put my clock half an hour forward, and I always used to aim to get everywhere half an hour early. So if you do the maths, I'm getting everywhere one hour early. My mum used to look at me, why are you leaving so early? What are you doing? Da -da 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 -da. But I knew what I was doing, get pace early. So when I used to get to the branch early, who is at the branch? The branch manager. And so we'd be having one-to-ones. We'd be talking, what do we need to do? What needs to happen? Plus, I'm showing consistency. I'm getting there. So I, I then have that trustworthiness. With a, and he used to tell me, look, if you want to get to the next level, read these magazines in the branch. If you want to get to the next level, go on this training. Go, we'd have, while we have our little talk in the morning, because we're also going to talk to you. You have to wait before we, before we open up. So basically, I used to smash it. I then, we used to have what we call mystery shop, where people would, there were people come in and pretend to be customers, but they weren't customers. I got 100% three times in a row. I won an award for, for that because obviously it wasn't heard of. This is what I was doing while I was still doing my degree. I knew that my degree was for my parents. I never want to go to uni. I didn't want to go to uni, but you know African parents, if you don't go to uni, they haven't lived their life. <laughs> so I had no choice. My parents have been talking about uni from when I was like 10. I thought you went from primary school to uni. Like <laughs> this, is all that, this is all they've been talking about. Do you know what I mean? So I knew I had to go, but I didn't want to go. I didn't want to do that. So, I knew that I was going to have to work because I'm not going to get, I'm not going to get a first class. Not me. Oh, no way. So, but I knew I could hustle. I knew I could outwork. I knew I could bring enthusiasm. I knew I could achieve a target that I was set. I was a learner. I was ready. I was hungry. And so at 22, they made me a financial advisor. The youngest financial advisor in Barclays in the country. All right. All my peers were in their late forties, early fifties, all my peers. And so for me, First day, did my training, went away, did my training, come back, qualified. First day, qualified, top floor, Canary Wolf building, they did a reception, I looked back at my estate. I can't even see my estate, I'm so high up. All I see is clouds. I, can't, I just know the direction, it's over there somewhere. But the point being, something that I said to myself at 13, 14, I made happen at 22. And I want you to understand that no matter what, you have the power to say something and then make it happen. But you also have the power to say something and think something and do nothing about it, okay? 
So don't ever allow your dreams or your circumstances or your situations ever hold you back from whatever you want to achieve in life. But at the same time, make sure you are being proactive and doing things to actually achieve your dreams. Don't you hear about people complaining about things that they never change? Mm -hmm. A lot of us complain about things and we make no difference. We make no change in our situation, yet we expect our situation to change. It's crazy. All right. And so I've been a financial advisor, but basically after doing it for, for 10 years, I, I got to that position where you get high up in, in the corporate, corporate ladder. So now I'm high up, all my peers are white. All my colleagues are white. All my clients are white. I'm, like, I'm living in this white world. Do you know what I mean? So you go to church on Sunday and you see all these black people. And then Monday to Saturday, you see nobody. And so I said to myself, no, nah, this can't be it. Because I'm going to my clients' houses and I'm seeing the cars that they drive. I'm going to my clients' houses that are millionaires and I'm seeing the clothes that they wear. And then I'm going back to the hood and I'm seeing people with no dough that are better dressed and have better cars. And I said to myself, no, something has to change. Something has to change. There needs to be an understanding of what's important. You see, a lot of the time, because we come from a place of not having, we attribute items to being wealthy or being rich. So, so, so you're going to see a man on an estate and he's going to have a BMW or a Mercedes, but yet you're, you're renting the council house. And we're going to big them up. Oh, your car's banging, bro. Hey, do you understand? This is what we're going to do. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? We're going to promote it and make it seem like that's great. What we haven't realized is that the car is going down in value from when you bought it till you got it home. Then you've added finance on top, so now you're paying interest on top of that. This is a bad investment. It's a very bad investment, but it's something that we are very much prone to do. And so I always talk about the fact that we're very good at, I think, um, Chant um, not Chantel, was it Chantel? Charmaine was talking about the fact that we are spenders, we are influencers, like we set trends. But we're very much consumers and not owners. So we will be the reason that, that certain companies' share prices are going up, yet we own no shares. And we're very comfortable being like that. When you think about like, I challenge my sisters, what's it, as, as, what is this boohoo coming through the door every day? <laughs> Who is this boohoo? <laughs> what is this? Every day, knock, knock, blah, 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 blah. You've got to drop this parcel. Who is this boohoo? I said, I said, do you own shares in this place? No. But yet, 30, 40% of your income is going to this place. You're invested. And so what I'm trying to say is that there are levels to this. Like, and so what we can call investments, like we invest in the way we look, like today's beyond hair, we invest in our hair. Oh, hair is important, isn't it? Yes. Hair is important. Yeah. Can change your whole face. Hair is <laughs> change your whole face. People say hello to me this day without no hair, tomorrow with the wig. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> You've confused me. You've confused me. It's, it's a big thing. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? But at the same time, we need to have that same priority on building wealth. We need to have that same priority on actually making money. And so today we're going to go for a few steps and move on. All right, let's go to the... So this is my wife, and it's our youngest baby. Um, she's going to be one this month. I've got four children. Four children. Yes. Don't, don't, don't do it, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I don't recommend it to nobody. I, it's my own cross to carry. I don't, I don't wish it to any of you. All right? So, so yeah, let's just move on. Time is ticking. So this is them. Oh, 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 this is them. This is them. So we've got Malachi, Ethan, Eliora, and then our youngest, Mia Ray. So these are four kids. And yeah, this is, this is my why. And so for you, you're around table now. I want you guys to really think about what is your why? Why are you here? What are you trying to learn today? Why have you chose to come to this session? Discuss it with each other, then we're going to feedback, and then we're going to go into it, all right? Thank you. All right, cool. Who wants the feedback? Two, three people just, just tell the room what's going on or what, what they discussed or what their why is and stuff like that and why they're here today, and then we'll just kick it off. Who wants to go? Who wants to go? Oh. There's someone here. Yeah. Um, I said my wife, um, she said like when I'm older, so when I'm in my 60s, to have like financial independence and not have like depend on my husband or children okay. to be able to live a good life all the time. That's good. Anyone else? Um, for me personally, I want to change up the story of my family like, mm. to come in the future. I don't want the same bad habits, the same patterns of like, poverty to carry on. 
Um, my why is because um, I want to be able to help my parents through their retirement, because if you look at the retirement percentage, it's abysmal. Yeah. And I also want to succeed in a way that can be an inspiration for girls or women that were like me, that mm -hmm. I can be able to personally help other people that can look up to me, like, oh, I succeed, and they can look up to me, like, and be that inspiration that I couldn't really have in, you know. So that's my heart. That's amazing. And the reason that it's important is that this life is hard. It's not always, you're not always winning. Don't look at Instagram, it's a lie. It's a lie. You're, people are only showing you the highlights. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So if you don't understand what your why is, you're going to get demotivated and you're going to quit. And when you quit, you lose. Do you, do you know what I mean? And so it's about understanding what is going to make you get up in the morning. What's going to make you keep on going when it gets hard, when others don't, why are you? What is it about you that's going to make you be different? Because let's be honest, most people don't achieve their dream. Most people don't. Do you know what I mean? Because, and then there's only a few that do, and those that do, what differentiate, like, what, what makes them different? They understand their why, they understand their purpose. When you think about someone like Steve Jobs, this is a man who was laughed at. Do you know what I mean? They thought it was a joke. And now look what, look what he's changed the whole generation. Do you, know, do you understand? Even though he's gone, he's still being mentioned. And so the point being is that he understood what he was about. He understood his, his why, his purpose. So he didn't let, he didn't let anything stop him from achieving that. And I want you guys to have that. Really understand what's your why and why you're moving to. Stats show that 92% of people that start a New Year's goal fail. Don't continue. So what I'm trying to say is having a plan is not enough. This is why it's so important to understand your why. Because you can plan as much as you want. Do you understand? You can plan it and say, oh yeah, I want to do this this year. But why didn't you do it? Why haven't you done it for the last four years? Do you know what I mean? And so sometimes it's going to be your why. Sometimes you haven't broke it down enough. With your plan, you have to be, let's go to the next step. With your plan, um, yeah, with your plan, you have to be, you have to break it down. Some of our plans are just so big, but we haven't bro broken it down. You got to make it, what are you doing? I always say reverse engineer. That's how I work. I don't look at where I am today. I look at where do I want to be, and then I work backwards. I look at, this is what I want to achieve. This is what I'm going to have to do to get there, and then this is what I'm going to have to do to get to that, and to that, until we get to today. And so now I know that if I follow the, these steps, I'm going to achieve what I set out, because I've worked backwards. A lot of the time we work, we've got a plan, and we're just going towards it, and we, don't, we just hope that we just land on it. And that's why sometimes it doesn't work out the way we want it to, all right? Mindset, thinking. A lot, like you, like, like you mentioned, in regards to, a lot of us come from a poverty mentality. And that's because a lot of us, a lot of our parents didn't have. Like, you have to understand, like, sometimes when we talk, a lot of our parents are first, not even first generation, they've come. Like, you relocate anywhere with, and given nothing. To achieve anything is amazing. But some of us don't even appreciate that. We don't even appreciate that we're in a house or our parents, like, the things that we have around us have come from nothing. From nothing. No help, no support, nothing. How many jobs? And not nice jobs. Like when I think about my mum, mo most of the time she was, a, she was a dinner lady. Now she had arthritis, she had to have a knee replacement because of standing so much as a dinner lady. That's the sacrifice that she made for me. But do I appreciate it or do we really appreciate what, these, what, what our parents had to do? My dad's an accountant, he had to be a security guard <laughs> until way, way before they would let him be an accountant. Some of us, were the parents were qualified where they were and then they've come here and then had to take jobs way below their qualification. What I'm trying to say is, is that sometimes we get into a bubble of, ah, oh, this person has this, this person has that. But we need to change our mindset. We need to change the way we think and look at what do we have. And think about what is your mindset when it comes to money? Where does it come from? Most, most of us can get into a place where we're spenders, where we spend, we're just ready to spend, we're ready to buy because we don't have. When, I was, when we were younger, a lot of the time, We'll get money, we'll buy trainers. Then you buy the trainers, the same trainers in a different color. It's embarrassing, like, to say it now. At the time, we was giving each other high fives. Do you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Because the way that we've wasted money, the way that we've wasted it, because we haven't understood that money is a tool. You could do more with money than just spend it. Do you understand? But we're taught to spend it because, obviously, for us, it's better for us to be spenders so they can take our money and go and do, go and invest it and go and build. 
And so a lot, of these, a lot of these industries are based off the back of our spending habits. And so what I'm trying to say is we've got to get into a place where we come out of that. All right, what's the next slide? No, no, just here, just here. So 70% of young people say that they get their financial education from their parents. But if your parents weren't trained, what education is that? Does that make sense? If no one has spent the time to teach your parents the system, this ain't like Africa. A lot of African countries, there's no mortgage. You either buy it, even your rent, you pay a year, a year in advance. So this is a completely different system. Sometimes we're blaming our parents. They're coming from a, a completely different system. They've never had to rent before, like monthly. And no one understands more what a mortgage is. You buy a house, you buy it cash, you buy the land, and you build it yourself, and you live in it. That's where they've come from. So if no one's explained it to them, how money works, how the system works, and then they're now, you're now looking to them for your education, how will you not fail? Am I making sense? And so what it, what it takes is you have to now educate yourself. And so that's why it's so important that you come to events like this, come to rooms like this, and educate yourself so that you will have an understanding that you can now pass to your children. And so that's how we grow as a community. And that's how we break the cycle, okay? A big thing is learning the difference between what you need and what you want. A lot of us focus on what we want over what we need, okay? And so because of that, it means that we don't have money. And I always use this example. So I look at my neighbor, yeah? My next door neighbor, her car is atrocious. One golf, something, polo. She could never drop me to the train station. Never, ever. So I said, oh, do you want to lift? No, I walk. I'm walking. That thing is atrocious. But she's just done an extension to the back of her house and extended the top. Her house is now worth a million pounds. Do you see the difference? With us, we're going to focus on the car and make sure that car is banging. And you know what I mean? We're taking pictures in the whip and we've got the music real loud so everybody knows. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Everyone knows we're about. But you got to because now you're paying 400 pounds a month. You understand? <laughs> if I earn a grand and I'm paying 400, my music's loud, my G. Everyone got, I got to make the most of this thing. Do you know what I mean? I've got to make the most of this situation because I know I'm crying at home. Do you know what I mean? I always tell people, when you go to, like, I see how many people in the Afro Nation are just watching the video, just laughing. You know the one that's skanking in the middle of the most? That guy was in the overdraft. They know that they're there on overdraft. They've got to enjoy every moment. 23 out of 24 hours, they've got to be in the rave. Because they know when they come home, bailiffs are waiting. Bailiffs are waiting for them. So, of course, I'm going to enjoy myself. How many of us are living this fake life in Dubai? You're in Dubai. I don't understand. How are you in Dubai? Do you, know how you know how expensive Dubai is? How are you in Dubai? It's not for all of us. It's not for everybody. You've just got a normal job part-time. TK Maxx, you're in Dubai. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Do you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? But we can't wait. There's something called delayed gratification. We can't, we can't, for us, we need instant gratification. You know when you go to the train station, and you get to the train station, especially in London underground, it's like four minutes. You're cussing, four minutes. Good service. Four minutes is a big thing. You want one minute or two minutes. We want it now. We need to learn the principles of delayed gratification, okay? And understand that what I'm saying to you is not that you're never going to enjoy, but what I'm saying is if you reduce your enjoyment now and the money that you save by reducing it, you then invest that money, later on, that money will pay for the lifestyle that you want to live. That's how you, that's how you get to financial freedom. That's how you build wealth. If you live now, and listen, as, listen, like I said, I'm Nigerian. I don't know if you lot know about Nigerians, but we like to party. We don't just do 50th, we do 51st. We do, we like, do you understand? You be at a 53rd party, like, whoa. <laughs> Full hall, yele, different uniforms, everything. Do you understand? Like, we love to party for everything. Do you understand? And so, when we have that culture of spend, 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 sometimes you have to say no. I think some of the powerful... One of, the, one of the best things that's going to change your life is the ability to understand that you can say no. You do not have to be somewhere. And if you offend some, if somebody is offended because you have said, listen, the way my budget is set up, I can't afford to do this, then offend them. Let those people go. Those are not the people. Because you know what? Sometimes we want to impress people so much. But when you're sick, do those people even text you? 
When you need money, those people, they never ask your phone call. But yet we're trying to impress them. We're trying to make, we're trying to make sure that everyone looks at us and oh, we make everyone else happy. But we're making other people happy at the detriment of ourselves. And what you have to understand is when you understand that you're more than just yourself, but you're, you're in a line of a generation. You're, there's a lineage. There's going to be more. And so if you don't set yourself up and you focus on making other people happy and don't set yourself up, you're not only hurting yourself, you're hurting those that come after you. But yet now you're in a powerful position to learn and educate yourself and change generations. Could you imagine that? I know we, we feel like we've missed it, especially in London. We're always looking around like we've missed it. Because obviously houses used to be like 20K and now they're like 400, 500. But we haven't missed it. We just got to look at different areas. We've just missed London. There's a whole England. Do you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? And so what we have to do is look at how can we make our money work for us? rather than just how can we spend our money and, and it's down the drain, all right? So, the labor application. All right, next one. Assets versus liabilities. A lot of us do not know the difference between an asset and a liability. What do we think an asset is? Somebody tell me an asset. Asset is something that generates an income for you. So what's value? Tell me, what's value? Is your hair not valuable? That 500 pound week is your value. <laughs> <laughs> What's value? Anyone? It has a worth. Any, so anything that has a worth. So this is, this is value. <laughs> For someone, yeah. It's an asset, right? Or is it a liability? I'm asking, I'm asking the question. So an, so asset, an asset has to generate an income for you. An asset has to generate income for you. Okay. So, what is that? When you say income, what is that? So, it has to, say for example, if you're buying a house mm -hmm. and you have a mortgage on it, it's not an asset until it actually starts to bring income, because if it's just a house and you're living in it, and you're paying the mortgage, then at that moment it's just a liability, because it's just draining funds from you. Did anybody hear that? Yeah. yeah. Because a lot of you would have said a house is an asset. The house you live in is a liability. Until you've paid off the mortgage, it's a liability. That's why if you don't pay it, they will come and take it, no? So how it, it can't be an asset. It's not even yours. You've got 25 years to pay that, okay? A car is a liability, but if you then hire that car out and make an income from it, it's now an asset. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? It's not necessarily the, 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 the actual thing itself. It's how it's used. And a lot of the time, we use it wrong. We're going to get our first house. We're going to spend 600K on our first house. What is wrong with you? I always tell people, when you're looking at buying your first house, you're looking at it as your first investment property. It's not for you. You're buying it and you're thinking, this is gonna be the first one. Before you get to the 600K houses, you gotta start small. So your first house is really the first house you're gonna rent out. And guess what? Because it's your, cause you're buying it for yourself, you only have to put a 5% deposit. If you're buying it to rent it out, you'd have to put 25%. So actually, now I get to buy my first investment property with only 5% down. It's how we look at it. But you can't look at it because number one, we don't understand how it works. And number two, we don't want to pay for advice. This is what a lot of the time why we fail. We do not want to pay for advice. Other communities understand the importance of paying for advice. With us, we just want to ask our friend, oh, so how did you do this? But what I try and tell people, when it comes to investing, coming to make money, it's like medicine. Just because I take medicine and I've got certain symptoms, it doesn't mean that because you have similar symptoms, that medicine will work for you. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Advice is personal to your situation, to your goals, and what you're trying to achieve. And so what I'm saying is, is that sometimes, yes, we can, try and we can try and learn stuff and educate ourselves, but there are people who do things every single day. It's like me now. If I'm going to do, do a wedding, I might just get a wedding planner. I might get someone that, that does events. Or, do you understand? It's not what I do every day, nor do I have the time to do it. So I've got to make sure that my budget makes sense to hire people to make sure that my day goes well. And it's the same when it comes to investing, when it comes to most things in life. Okay? So, understand the difference between an asset and liability. All right? This just talks about how most, a lot of people are in debt, but we can move on. This is the big one for me. All right? So, they did a survey, and this is the percentage of people that own property by, by their race. Okay? And so, you see... When it comes to black African, 21%, black Caribbean, 
Do you know why the Black Caribbean, how they got to that point of doing 37%? Do you know how most Black, black Caribbeans bought their property? Has anyone heard of Pardner? Anyone heard of Pardner? Nigerians might call it, I think, Ojo, something like that. So basically, so basically what they did was group economics. So what we do is we all agree that we're going to put in a certain amount and everyone gets a chance to have that amount at a different time. Okay? And so that is a big thing in the Caribbean community and that's how they bought the majority of their houses. But you see what happened is, is as we got older, we started to feel like we know too much and we've moved away from that to, to Western ways of getting it. And guess what? The system just doesn't say yes to us. And so now we're reducing. If you look at, obviously, other, other communities, it's a lot higher. And so it's really important that we start to now work together, encourage one another, support one another to try and get on this property ladder and start building assets. Okay? So step three, have a plan. Like, have a plan. Let's go. Have a plan. Set goals, set targets. And I'm talking drill down. Don't just have a, a drill it down. What does that mean per week? What do you have to do that week to ensure that you're on track? What does overperformance mean? What does underperformance mean? What happens if I underperform? What do I now need to do in the following week? Okay? Write it down, set a date. Okay? Accountability partner. A lot of us got bare friends when it's time to go party. Everyone's there, blow happy birthday to you understand? But now it's time for now it's time to do something serious. We ain't got no one. And so you now to start need to looking at who do you have around you? Because all this party party is cool, but let's start, let's start having friends that say, yo, how close are you to getting your deposit? Oh, have you, started, have, you seen, have you seen these shares that you can buy? Have you heard about an ISA? Let's start, let's start educating ourselves and being assets to our friends and encouraging each other to build. Break down your goal. Plan your first steps. Keep it going. Celebrate. This is one thing I think we don't do enough. We do not celebrate when we do stuff because we're trying to be humble. That humble thing, we need to let it go. To me, if we don't celebrate each other, if we don't celebrate each other, what happens is, is that we don't understand that people are achieving stuff. Every day I sit down with, with black people, because now I just focus on black, mainly black people that have got businesses, that are doing so many different things and succeeding, and I just think, when I look on television, we're not going to see this. When I look outside, we're not going to see this, but we are doing well. But we're being quiet because we're scared. Oh, if I say something, my friends might not like me. Or the haters. Listen, let them hate. They were hating you anyway. <laughs> when they thought you were failing, they were hating you. So we winning, they're still hating. There's no difference. We've got to celebrate. Because you know what? To me, when I see someone of my race doing well, it's only motivation. It can only motivate me like, yes, we're here. We're in the room. Yes, we're doing things. And that's how you should take it. Not, oh, but this person did this, this person did that. Let's move on. So this is how you're going to break down your accounts going forward, okay? So you're going to split your money into three. One account is going to have all your outgoings. Goes from one account. So it's set. You add up all your outgoings. When you add up all your outgoings, so all your direct debits, all your fixed costs, all the costs you know, when you add them all up, I want you to rank them. I want you to rank all your outgoings. So one being the most important. So if you've got mortgage, rent, whatever, that's number one. All the way down. The ones that are at the bottom, I will challenge you to see, do you still need them? Can you let them go? And the reason I tell you to do this is that you'll find that those little ones, by the time you've taken three or four of them off, all of a sudden, you've now given yourself an extra 100 pounds, 150 pounds, 200 pounds that you can now start saving and investing and building towards your goal. Rank them, challenge yourself. And plus you'll find things, I'd even know I'm still paying that. That free offer's expired and now you're, now you're paying and you didn't know. All right? Then you're gonna have another account. You're gonna put yourself on a budget. A lot of us play the game of how much money can I spend and can I spend it all this month? <laughs> so all your bills come out, you've got one account, all your bills come out, and then whatever's left is now a challenge. I've got 600 pounds left. Boom. What can this do? And so, and, and that's why you'll get to like the 17th, 20th of the month and you're now sweating. Oh Lord. <laughs> when is payday this week? Oh. 
Oh, no, it falls on a Monday. Like, you're stressed. <laughs> stressed. This can't be life. You know how much you have coming in. You know how much you're going out. Why are you shocked? How, where is the surprise? It happens every month. <laughs> where is the surprise? Yet we're shocked like, oh, no. I'm in my overdraft. No, you knew you was going to be there, my dear. <laughs> you knew. You knew. There's no shock here. All right? So it's now about changing the way we look at it. And then, once you've done that, then you've got the remaining amount that goes into savings. Listen, if you have a savings account and it's on an app, it's not a savings account. You're lying to yourself, not to me. If you can move money from your savings account into your current account by a flick of the button on your phone, that is just a current account that you're calling a savings account to make yourself feel better. <laughs> just like we have gym membership, but nobody's going to the gym, okay? This is how it works. If, you wanna, if you're serious about saving, you've got to open an account in a next bank. No card. Even if they give you the card, they don't open it. No card. You get statements. If you want to take money out of that account, you now have to go and queue. You know them Quay Quay banks, like nationwide. <laughs> know them banks there where you know the old lady's going to be in the queue talking about her grandson. And like, you're not even feeling it. Like, you're, not, you're just not going to go there. That is how you're going to... You have to put barriers in front of yourself in order to make sure. I had one of my clients put their credit card into, into, into a uh, tub of water, um, put the water into the freezer, wow. boom. Before you can use that credit card, you have to now start breaking this thing. <laughs> By the time you've broken it, you've had time. Do I really, 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 really? You know what? Let me just leave it. Sometimes you have to put these barriers because it's so flick of a button, just touch, beep, beep. Listen, I told people, yeah, if you want to have 10,000, by the end of the year, that is 27 pounds something a day. 27 pounds something a day. Some of us are spending that, boom, boom, just on nothing, on nothing. Just Uber Eats, boom. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? And so the point being is that we have to start putting these things out. We have to start putting these things out. Education, point four, education. Never stop learning, all right? So when it comes to education, there's different types of education, all right? So, we've got industry. I use Steve Jobs as an example. He was educated in his industry. He knew his thing inside out, and then he made innovations in his own industry. He, okay? So there's an industry knowledge, there's a work knowledge that you need that you're gonna have to understand. Stop going to work and using it just as nine to five so you get paid. Start learning from your job. What do they put in place? What are the things that they have? Because your work, some of us want to go into business, and we've got an example that we get paid to be every day of how to run a business. Because somebody had an idea, and now they can afford to pay you. Okay? And hopefully you want to get to a place where you have a business that you can afford to pay others. So start using the, your work and use it as an example for your, what, what do they do good? What don't they do well? What are the things you can learn? What did you have on your first day? What did they put in place? What are the T's and C's? What is HR? You want to you have your own company? You want to get a contract? Hey, guess what? You have a contract. Now you have an example of what you need to put down. Okay? These are industry knowledges. What, what, re what regulation is there? What insurances do you have to put in place? Okay? Then there's life. Anybody heard of Eric Thomas? Eric Thomas is like the hip-hop preacher, all right? There's one point where this guy was literally homeless. Nothing. Homeless. Today, Eric Thomas, if he comes to give this talk in London, his minimum fee is 100K. 100K. This is somebody that was homeless. Today, 100K just to come and talk for half an hour. <laughs> Do you... What I'm saying is, is that some of us have a life experience that can change, that other people are going through, and we can package it in a way where people will pay us to hear our life experience to change others. I don't know if you see how much life coaches there are here. <laughs> way too many. <laughs> Facts, way too many. Do you understand? But the point being is that for some people, they can actually coach. They can actually... Some of us, some of you, have gone through an experience that many pe other people are going through, and the way that you say it, the way that you deliver it, people will pay to hear you say it. You're building a life experience. 
But I'm telling you, how do you have life experience if every day you go to work, you come home, you're in there, you're watching EastEnders, you go to sleep? You can only have life when you add to your life. What are you adding? What are you doing? What, are you writing it down? The things, when things go wrong, write them down. Because one day you're going to put that in your book. Do you understand? One day you're going to put that in your book and somebody's going to pay you to, ha- to, to read your story. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I'm in a position today where I used to, I used to contract. And what I used to get paid to be contracting for a day, and I'll get paid for an hour consult. I'm not a millionaire, but I will be. Do you understand? But the point is, it's not where, it's not where you are. It's process. When you see me here today, it's not today that I started. I've been a financial advisor for over 12 years. When I was, a fina- when I was studying and doing, you don't, never heard about me. You never knew about me. Well, I didn't say I'm going to stop. I use my life experience. The reason I'm here today is because, in case you notice, I'm from the hood. But I've been able to learn some valuable things and break them down in a way that a certain group of people will understand it. And that's why people pay me to come and speak. And, to, and today, I don't know if you saw the show, but I was on Channel 4. Put me on a TV show. Save or spend better. The reason Channel 4 put me on there, number one, because I was a label. Number two, because I'm a real financial advisor, qualified. Number three, because I'm black. Because they wanted to show that there are black people that are not just footballers and rappers. There are black people that are experts. But if I decided that I'm just going to I'm just going to stay here in my bubble where I was and just deal with high net worth rich people, that never would have happened. I had to step out. And when I stepped out, oh, it was painful. I had company car. I had company credit card. I had over 100 K a year. I left it all. That was my decision. And today, like I said, I'm free. Like I can, I, I can afford to live a lifestyle that I want to without any the need of other people to pay me. I could take my kids to school in the morning, put a price on that. Do you understand? Because I couldn't do that before. I could go to my kids' parents even, I couldn't do that before. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So sometimes we are valuing things but trust me, this is why you see millionaires still c- commit suicide. Money ain't enough. Millionaires still commit suicide. We want to be millionaire. Millionaire is dying. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Because money is not everything. Like, imagine the disappointment when you put an aim on money, on an amount, of, and say, when I earn this much, my life is going to be different. And you get that much, and it's still the same. You're still not happy. What's left? And I always talk about when we, like with children, what, what type of generation are we trying to raise? Some of our kids are so spoiled because we want to give them everything. But Bill Gates, is giving his, he's dying, his kids are getting no money. He's even giving away so much money, he's not even the richest man in the world anymore. Why? Because he said, listen, with the, with the education and lifestyle that I've given these kids and the name Gates, if that ain't enough for them, then my money was going to be wasted anyway. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? That's, that's the type of children you want to be raising. All right, let's move on. Five minutes, no problem. Importance of credit. This is the last one, credit. I need you to understand the importance of credit. Let's look at it quickly. For a lot of you, you're purchasing these items. Mm-hmm. You can see yourself on the screen, right? <laughs> Shoes, bags, clothes, holiday cars. You can see yourselves. All right. I need you to understand the difference between good debt and bad debt, all right? A lot of, there is debt that makes you money, and there's debt that makes you lose money, okay? And so you need to understand the difference between what is good debt and what is bad debt. Let's move on. Leverage. And we're going to end on this, but leverage is so important. Imagine you, like I said of a house, you put down 5%, but now you have 100% access of this property. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? for only putting down 5%. That's leverage. But some of us can't get 5% because the way our credit is shaped up right now, the bank ain't gonna give us nothing. Computer says no. <laughs> and why? Because we, we, were, we wanted to live this fast life. We wanted to, wanted to be buying these student loan. You've just gone and bought bag and car and now you've got nothing to buy books. Now you're going home every weekend, packing, packing ice cream containers. <laughs> hmm. You're laughing, you know yourselves. 
This is Grant Card Cardone, yeah? This brother was in a, he was in the line. In America, you've got to go in line and queue to get your benefits, yeah? He was in the line to do that. Now he has a $500 million real estate. $500 million from in the queue, in the line to give somebody give you money to $500 million. That's leverage. It allows you to do more. Let's flip on. Hey, you lot know the sign, isn't it? <laughs> it's the devil, please. Stop yourself. If you don't have the money, if you don't have the money, don't buy it. One of my friends was telling me the other day, like, we're talking about Range Rovers, like, obviously buying these nice cars, Bentleys, and did it. I said, listen, if I ain't got two houses, at least two houses, I can't buy that type of car. Do you understand? These are bad investments. You're buying clothes, Kalana, Kalana. Listen, what about the one in your, <laughs> in your, in your own wardrobe? You've got clothes with still the tag on. You can go and do your own Kalana from your wardrobe. <laughs> and you're still here. My goodness. Let's look at some credit tips quickly, all right? So, all right, these are the main ones. These are the main credit, credit agencies, all right? I like to use um, Credit Karma. Um, and clear score because they're free. At this stage, that's all you need. Don't make them fool you. This stage, that's all you need. When you get to mortgages, you can look at the other ones. All right, some quick tip. Check your credit file. Some of you are avoiding your credit file because you know that it's going to be bad. Because mm -hmm. you know what you was doing. You was giving your boyfriend your, your account details, doing 419, and now your, credit is in, now your credit is in red. We can change it. It's only six years, okay? It's only six years. Get on the electoral roll. People are like, I don't vote, I don't vote. Don't worry. Just get on the electoral roll. It's common sense, yeah? If I'm going to borrow you money, I want to know where I can find you. That's just common sense. That's why the electoral roll is really important. If you're at uni, don't keep changing your address to all these different houses that you're moving to. You've messed yourself up. So a lot of the time, if you're at uni, if you can, leave your, leave your address mainly based at your parents' address, okay? So that way, you're on the lecture at your parents' address, and then your address, your address history says flat. Because again, when you've moved to all these different houses, now when you go to a filling form, they say, your last five years. You know, I remember three months I was here, all of a sudden, and plus, whatever's happened in that house can potentially affect you, okay? Pay more than the minimum. So if you ha do have a credit card, pay more than the minimum. To me, if I'm using a credit card, I told you when I use credit, I only use it if it makes me money or saves me money, okay? So if I, if I use a credit card, if it makes me money, then I, so if I'm using something, I know what I'm going to purchase is going to make me more, then fine, if it saves me money. If I know that I'm going on holiday, and if I buy it right now, it's cheaper, and I know I've got the money to then pay off in a period of time on an interest-free credit card, that makes sense. I've just saved myself money. We're just using credit, and we're using it to buy stuff that has no value, and we're creating debt for ourselves. Does it make you money? Does it save you money? All right? Pay more than, don't keep your debt below 50%, really 40%, but maximum 50% of your credit. Some of us are, oh, I've got 10K. Listen, chill out. Chill out. More time, you only, you only make, you only own a, on a job of 15K and you've got 20K, 10K on a credit card. You're killing yourself because how are you now going to pay this back one day? And what happens if you stop working for whatever, whatever period? And so these are the type of mistakes that we make in our youth that affect us when we're older, when we want to go and get mortgages and so forth, okay? So focus, you can focus on paying debt in different ways. All right, so the importance of leverage. So let, this, is the, this, is, this is it right here. So two people can drive the same car, yeah? The same car, but based on their credit, the finance can, can be completely, you know, what they're paying is completely different. So in this example, someone's paying an extra 4,000 846 pounds to drive the exact same car, all because of their credit, okay? So it's really important that you understand your credit, and this is the same with mortgages. If your credit's not good, you're gonna have to go to a higher mortgage, uh, a high, uh, pay a higher rate. Two, if, you're, if you can get 1.99, but now you have to go and get 2.7 .7 on something that's 300K over 25 years, that's hundreds of thousands of pounds extra that you're gonna pay, okay? So it's really important that you understand the importance of your credit and you keep it clean, all right? So debts, list your debts down, understand them, understand where your money's going, what you need to spend your money on, okay? There's different ways. So you can do the snowball, so you can start with the smallest debt. Because you just, as you pay that off, it gives you the motivation to pay off the next one, all right? 
them, or you can go for the one with the highest amount of interest and pay that one first. Or you can, if your credit's good enough, you can get a loan, pay them all, and then just have one payment. All right? I think we're, what's left? Ah, these are one-to-ones. You can come and see me afterwards. If you need help with finances and all that type of stuff, come see me. I'm going to be here all day. But I hope that helps. It's just one hour, unfortunately. But this is it. Thank you.